What is up, Matthew Nemo here with another Friday First Reaction. Today we got 29 new songs on this beautiful ultra weekend. So let's get started with Whistle by 4B and T's. This is the first release on Premier Class, which is DJ Snake's brand new label. <laughs> I've definitely heard this on 4B's Snapchat store before. This is how I opened a lot of the sets. Now, I am a fan of this song. However, I don't think it's the most listenable outside of a festival setting. So definitely a great banger. Might add it to a couple more high energy playlists. However, I don't think I'm gonna be necessarily listening to this in my everyday life. Next up is What Are You Waiting For by Stonebank. Oh, 2012, baby. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my God, Stone Bank. I cannot, I love this second half of this drop so much. What are you waiting for by Stonebank? Really great piece of Complexor House. That song was produced very well, sounded very, very clean. Uh, first drop, very aggressive, then the second half of each drop. Very surprisingly melodic piece of Electro House where it had that nice rolling bass that I've missed very sorely in the past couple years. Next up is Scream for Daddy by Angels and Slatin. Drop better be very good. A little sad I wasted four minutes of my life on that. At the very least, it's just too many new elements all coming in at once. I know Angel plays a lot of shows. I'm curious to how the crowd reacts to this because to me it seems pretty confusing. Hard skip. It's gonna be the doo doo pile later. Alrighty, I'll tell you that much. Next up is Flames by David Guetta and Sia. Look how everyone just copies Calvin Harris. Look at this. You see this? It seems like the song is sort of moving into that Calvin Harris funk. Kind of says to me that we might see a more watered down EDM funk transition over this next eight, 10 months. As far as low tempo, two step sort of ballads, I'm gonna say All the Stars with Kendrick Lamar and SZA is actually a better song that's out right now. However, the song is pretty good. Since it's not my thing, I'm not gonna add it to any playlists. Next up is Okami by Blinders. <laughs> This is a very interesting interlude. I kind of like it though. A little hip hop, a little Eastern Asia or something. We put it down. Oh. The great thing about Blinders is even though he has a very recognizable sound and he always has stuck with it, he still managed to push the sound and the organization of his different songs and make them feel unique every time. And Okami is definitely one of them. If you're a fan of Blinders, fan of more fidgety, up-tempo house, this song is really dope. I really like it. Next up is Long Live House Music by DeLayers and Breathe Carolina. All right, uh, I'm not gonna listen to that song. Drop. Very simple and annoying. Nothing cool about that song at all. Next up is Colorblind by Diplo and Lil Xan. I don't know if Diplo had this flume sort of production in him. Not knowing anything about Lil Xan, this was a pleasant surprise. I expected something more hip hop, more rap. 
Don't necessarily know why Diplo had to have him on this song, however. Could have been much, much worse. Next up is Believe by Don Diablo and Baby Driver. I don't like the processing on his vocals. I'll say that right now. Oscar Gert sounds, he sounds like a 40 year old dude. The content of the lyrics and how he was saying it, he just sounded like a very old, gospely dude. And the drop wasn't really that good, the lead was pretty annoying. Definitely gonna skip. Next up is In the Zone by Jaws, an example. Not a bad UK underground house song. I'm gonna be honest, this song would have been great if it came out in 2015. This song is definitely not pushing any boundaries or doing anything too special in 2018. A little disappointed on this one because I do think this is the first single off of Jaws' new album that's coming out soon. This song was pretty underwhelming as far as an album single goes. So, I don't know Jaws, it's kind of sketchy. Next up is Roots by Casbo. The backgrounds, even though it's very subtle, has a lot of very interesting sounds right now going on. The percussion here at the end, too. Now, pardon me for not being too familiar with Casbo. This song was very well produced. Good vocal performance, too, by Amanda Fondell. I do like the song quite a bit. Next up is Aeon by Funkin' Matt. Already has that hexagon sound. <laughs> a trance melody to be honest. Like, the sound could be inspired by like an old Tiesto record or something. Great piece of synth sugar. Super pleasant synth. Almost trancey sounding, however. Had a great modern house finish. Definitely a fan of this song. Next up is Late On Me by Casbo and I'm gonna read the name. Keenan Lonsdale. Very earthy. That's a fun lovey dovey track. If you're a fan of The Middle by DJ Snake, I think this is up your alley. Just as far as the tempo, possibly the key, and then the vocal leads on top. The vocal is kind of cringy. At least the chorus was like laid on me. Not a bad track though. Next up is Damien Endrick's remix of Into You by Matizi and Sadko. I did not necessarily like what Dame Hendrix added to that song. He added a trolley sounding flute and it didn't complement well with the super saws that he chose to keep in from the original mix. So definitely not my favorite Damon Hendrix work, period. Might be my least favorite actually. Next up is Mayhem by Stevie Oki and Quintino. If you guys know what next preset this is, comment below. Cause I'm actually curious. That song is doing nothing for Big Room House. It's gonna be forgotten within the next week. So let's just move on to Jay Hardway, Coffee Please. So this is really just Jay Hardway continuing to diversify his catalog. Nothing too special, but not too bad either. Next up is Right Here, Right Now by San Holo and Tasca Black. Really oddly mastered though. Why is it getting quieter like throughout the drop? Right here, right 
It was a decent Task Black to Noel collab. For some reason, the guitar lead was quiet in the drop, so I don't know what that was about. I've never heard that before. We just kind of jogged to here, so I'm gonna definitely skip this one. Next up is King Kong by Alva Heldrum's High Low Touch. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the first song in the past four, maybe even five years that had a Hoover that I didn't nod my head at. It was actually unexpected in a cool addition to the high-low sounds, because it was a very minimal drop at first, but the bass line was that perfect blend of dirty and hitting just right, so. So shout out for high-low for continuing to give these nice deep house bangers with a very, very minimal flavor. Very, very cool. It is Rumble by Excision and Space Laces. Probably my favorite dubstep collab at the moment is these guys. Okay. Compared to some of the other Excision Spaceless collabs, probably not my favorite, however. Not a bad song at all. Definitely seems more on the Excision side of things. Like, they did most of the drops, most of the synth work. This is more of a generic sort of basses. So this song is definitely no Space Laces, however, not a bad execution. If you're a bass head, this song is definitely gonna be on your playlist this summer. But personally, not on that threshold where I'd listen to it any further. Next up is Away's remix of Leaving by Elenium. Is this Eden singing? Why is Eden not featured on this? It's a great vocal. <laughs> So knowing away, he's essentially, in my opinion, the dark counterpart to Flume. Just very dark, glitchy artist. And I think this song perhaps is a little too glitchy for most people, even for me, to be honest. It's a very harsh song. Not too much groove to it compared to some of the other away songs. So this is definitely low on the totem pole of away releases. However, it was very well produced. So I don't know where the execution went wrong, but not my favorite. Next up is Sorbet by Mord Fustang. It's been a while. Still on plasma. Kind of Anjuna beat sounding. This mad reverb on this sample. So the builds and the intros were actually pretty cool, however, the drop, just too basic and really annoying. I didn't like how the vocal was mixed, it had a lot of reverb on it. Definitely didn't hold my attention for the full six minutes. Next up is Gotta Get Away by Chocolate Puma. Haha! <laughs> oh, fuck this! Honestly, if I was on a flight right now to Miami for Ultra Music Festival, this would be the song playing as I land into Miami airport because this song is just a very fun vacation anthem. The filtered synths were very groovy, and I don't know what it is about Chocolate Puma's low end, but it always has a very, very bouncy sound to it that I really like. This is a very pleasant surprise. I didn't know that Chocolate Puma necessarily had this sort of song in them, so definitely one of my favorites. Next up is Storm Chips by Deza. Great piece of actual progressive house here. I can definitely see someone like Eric Pratt dropping the song, even though this song is a release on Spin and Premium, which I still don't know what that is. Premium's been pretty dope with a lot of their house songs. This being one of them, 
Pretty big fan of the song. Next up is The Last Dancer by Arn Van Buren and Shapov. <laughs> Nice piece of melodic trance. I really like the intro for that song as well and how it got right into the first drop. If you're a fan of more melodic trance music, this is definitely for you. The Lone was kind of weak, but that's going to distract you too much if you're a fan of that kind of music. Definitely gonna keep listening to this one, see how I feel because it's a pretty interesting trance song and considering how stagnant trance has been, actually I'm a pretty big fan of this. Next up is No by Dirty Caps and Wide Awake. I don't know if I like it. I can't do side trance or whatever BPM this is. I kinda like the outro right now though. The first drop, I actually thought the 808s on that were actually pretty thick and nice. If you're a fan of UK rap and you're a fan of jungle barong sound, trap music, you're gonna like this song a lot. If you think both of those things are annoying and not your style, you're definitely not gonna like it. I personally would have been a fan of this song if it didn't have that second drop. I was trying to be weird side trance at some low BPM. Just doesn't work. You should have knew that in the studio when you're making it. And for that reason, I'm gonna skip on this song. Next up is Moments by Alexander Popov and Andrew Rail. <laughs> I know exactly what this is. This is good. You ready for this? Mike. <laughs> so this song, when I listened to it, I instantly thought of D Fat by Arm Van Buren, just based on that intro lead. And I honestly thought that they're gonna use that lead also in that drop after that super, super long build up, just like in D Fat. However, they switched it up to a more traditional trance drop, and that was a surprise to me, but it still kept a very, very big sound. Actually, I think if you're a fan of Big Room House or more mainstream, this is actually a great song to get into trance, uh, really hold your attention the whole time. Very huge sounds. Probably one of my favorite Andrew Rail tracks come out in the past couple months to be honest. And he's probably one of my favorite producers in the trance game right now. This song's really good. Next up is Octane by LeMay and Uzi. <laughs> There's always one every week. There's always one. That song was a great blend of trap and dubstep in my opinion, so if you're a fan of trap, you want to hear something more dubstepy, it's moving to that zone. And if you're a dubstep fan and you want to start exploring more trap sort of sounds and cadences, this is a great song for that. I like when things fuse like that. It sounded very clean, quite the banger, so props to LeMay and Uzi for that one. Last song is Reconnect by Midas and Mahi. <laughs> Last track by Midas and Mahi. If you're a fan of Odezo or Medeon, you're gonna really, really like the song actually. Production gives you that very, very free, liberating feeling. Definitely a spring song, in my opinion. Now it's time for the top five songs of this Friday. In no particular order, we have number one, Okami by Blinders. Classic Blinders. If you're a fan of house music, I think you're gonna be a really fan of this song. What Are You Waiting For by Stone Bank. Great electro house song. Really looking forward to that Monsquette EP. Gotta Get Away with Chocolate Puma and Chateau. Hope Spin and pushes this song hard, markets the hell out of it, rather than some of their other more heavily promoted artists because this song's really good. Probably gonna see this in plenty of festival after movies. 
uh, and I'm not actually going to mind that at all. Number four, Roots by Casbo. If you're a fan of that down tempo, electro beat sound that has a little bit more glitch to it, this song, perfect for you. And last but not least, Moments by Alexander Rail and Andrew Popov. Fantastic piece of trance, and I think in my opinion that it does have a big room sound. I could see Hardwell even playing this, to be honest. And for the worst songs of the week, or at least the most disappointing. Long Live House Music by Breathe Carolina and Delairs. Simply not a good song at any part of it, to be honest. Scream for Daddy by Angels and Slatten. Not much to say about that song. You can just listen to it and know why. That's an instant skip. Believe by Don Diablo and Ansel Elgort. Surprisingly, didn't really love any part of that song, even though I'm a fan of both of them as artists. In the Zone by Jaws and Example. Just pretty underwhelming for an album single. So that's why it's in there as well. The last worst song of the week is Sorbet by Mord Fustang. Still that classic Mord Fustang sound, but the lead and any element just wasn't catchy enough for me to really listen to it for three minutes, let alone six minutes. So what was your guys' favorite song of the week? Did I miss any songs? Did you like any of the songs that I had in my worst? Did you hate any of the songs that are my favorites? Love to discuss below what you guys thought. I know I missed the whole Maddox album. I'm going to be reviewing that later. Very excited for that album, so I'll be doing a whole separate video on that, so don't worry about that album. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe. This has been Friday First Reaction for March 23rd. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>